Today, I'm excited to share an interview about modern PHP with PHP core developer Gina Banyard and PHP contributor Larry Garfield. And as for all my interviews, I've edited the video after the fact and also added the background visuals myself. Let's get started. So uh, could you please introduce yourselves? So hi, my name is Larry Garfield. I'm a uh, principal engineer at Makers Hub, or a fintech startup. I've been doing PHP since 1999, uh, back when PHP 3 was new and cool. I uh, got involved in the broader community sometime around 2007. Uh, I've been involved in a number of major open source projects, and I started collaborating with people on PHP core itself somewhere in the 2020-2021 range. Uh, hello, my name is Gina Banyard. I a PHP Core developer. I'm funded by the PHP Foundation to work on PHP Core. I started contributing in 2019, so six years ago. Uh, it's weird. I did some PHP when I was a teen, then I stopped, and then I started again. Uh, so yeah, that, that's basically my story. So what motivated you all to start contributing to PHP? It's a bit of a weird story for me. I needed to redo my first year of university for various family reasons. And during that year where I was basically sitting at home, I just started contributing to the French translation of PHP because I was bored. Seeing that there were like many weird edge cases on documentation stuff or stuff that was not documented. So then I went to like the English documentation and then I started to propose how to like fix certain edge cases and semantics. And then somehow I got more and more involved and I can't escape it anymore. <laughs> For me, it was... It was lacking features that I wanted, so I partnered with people to add those features. So it's very selfish for me. Okay, very awesome. Now, a lot of people are familiar with PHP, but maybe a lot of people aren't familiar with the current state of PHP. What might surprise people about the modern state of PHP? How modern it is, really. The analogy I usually use is, if you look at JavaScript 20 years ago versus JavaScript today, it's a completely different language in a lot of ways. And you know, all the criticisms you could level at JavaScript in 2005, most of them don't apply in 2025. The same is true of PHP. There's a lot you can say bad about 2005 PHP. Most of it is no longer relevant. Modern PHP is a very fast language. It has the strongest type system of any interpreted language that's actually enforced. It's not just for static analysis. It has features that have been homegrown. It has features that have been borrowed from other languages, like we just recently got property accessors like Kotlin and C-sharp and Swift have. We have asymmetric visibility. And we just got a pipe operator that's going to be coming out this fall. Uh, I'm very excited about that. If you ask for what features does a modern language have, there's some that PHP is lacking, but most of them are there. And you could say the same about most other languages. There's something missing in them that you'd like to have, but it's a pretty solid language. And that's true for PHP. That's great. How is the JIT currently in PHP? Uh, the JIT, it has had a few iterations. I think that's like fair to say. The current iteration is, so it used to be using Lua JIT. So it was like compiled, like it was using that. And every JIT handler has a corresponding PHP opcode, but that was very bug prone and code duplication and unreliable. So now what's, what the new JIT iteration is since, I think it's 8.4. There's a new intermediate representation that it compiles to, and then the new IR and framework takes care of doing the optimization and lowering to the actual machine code rather than the PHP opcode directly being translated to the machine code, which is tedious and bulk code and not very easy to do optimizations actually with it. One of the things to note with the JIT is most PHP code runs in a shared nothing context. So you know, a request comes in on the web, it runs, it exits, and you're done, which has lots of benefits, lots of downsides. Uh, basically, PHP has been doing serverless since before the term existed. You know, it's, it's been serverless since the mid-90s. But that means that the JIT usually doesn't have a chance to do much because the memory is cleared. Unless you're using you know, one of the persistent process variants of PHP, like React PHP, which predates React JS, or AMP, or the new one, uh, Franken PHP, which we can talk more about, where it does maintain a persistent process, and then the JIT can offer some advantage. So for most people, the JIT doesn't kick in, but it also isn't necessary because the engine itself is, at this point, extremely fast. Depending on the benchmark, just straight up PHP is, 
either just behind JavaScript or on par with JavaScript, but it's way faster than Ruby and Python. Uh, now, in terms of servers, serverless, or completely server unrelated, should anyone consider using PHP for development other than for, say, you know, web server type situations? Uh, I mean, I think so. I know there are very different applications. I know some people do medical imaging with PHP, like specifically. I know the French government, like the, the French education ministry, uses PHP to do orchestration for like all of the big blue button instances, which is like um, classroom video conferencing software. So they basically have something that like starts loading up and preparing all of the instances around like five, 10 minutes before 9 a.m. and then like reduces it at like the lunchtime and, and like scale it back up. There are many use cases that like you can use PHP for. I think it's just like if it's a tool that you need and if the ecosystem is there to like help you and support you, there's like many things you can do with it. Like people do console applications. Many people like do very funky stuff with PHP as well. I mean, more for funsies. Uh, but like, I think there's multiple people who did like bindings to like OpenGL and stuff like that. So they run like a small video game, things of it, like, or I think there's another project, which is like music related server. It's like still server things. It's like, oh, you have a, like a music server that you can just like stream stuff from, but it's like, yeah, if the ecosystem and the tooling, you know, you can definitely use it for more than just web development. And in terms of development on PHP itself, what are things you've either recently worked on or something you're currently working on for pushing the PHP language forward? I usually like think of myself as like the janitor and like the PHP semantics person in that I try to make the, the edge cases less rough and make the semantics easier to understand. But the one thing that I'm kind of been working on, which I was hoping it would get into 8.5, but didn't really, is like uh, something which I call abstract generics. So I think generics, Everybody knows it in that, like, oh, you, you can instantiate a container class and then, you know, you say, oh, I want the containers of, I don't know, cars. And then, you know, that like this container only has cars. This turns out to be quite difficult for PHP to, to implement as is because the way the engine works is that everything is associated with the class declaration rather with the object instance. And if you want runtime generics, then it needs to be associated with the object instance. Uh, but abstract generics don't have this problem. So that's something I've been working on. Um, uh, yeah. By abstract generics, we mean um, generics on abstract classes or interfaces, so that every concrete class has a you know final type defined, but you can still get a lot of the benefits of uh, associated types, essentially. I tend to focus more on pushing the envelope on functionality around data modeling and functional programming. So as I mentioned, I worked on the pipe operator that we're getting this fall in 8.5. I'm working with someone on partial function application. Uh, the design we have for that, I think, is really nice. It's more powerful than what I've seen in any other language. Not quite done, so it's not going to make it into 8.5, but it should be in 8.6, fingers crossed, assuming it you know, passes its entrance vote. We'll get to that later. I'm working with someone else on uh, pattern matching as well. So we will be able to say, you know, this variable is some complex rule set. And does it give you back a Boolean? Uh, so that's something else I've been working on. Again, hopefully that'll be an 8.6, but can't promise. Okay, and in terms of that vote you were talking about, how does PHP governance work? PHP is the quintessential leaderless organization, which is both for better and worse. We, we go into too much detail there, but there's a kind of squishy uh, group of voters who have contributed to PHP in the past in some form, and that's a very amorphous group. It's around 1,500 people. In practice, only about 100 ever vote, and most votes are the same 30 or 40 people who actually participate. But any proposal, uh, there's an RFC process. You post a proposal, you post an implementation for it, you argue on the mailing list, and eventually call a vote. And if the vote is two-thirds or higher, then we can merge that. If it's not, we don't. Everyone is the same vote, so you know, Gene and I have just as much voting power as each other and as anyone else. Obviously, there's people who are recognized names, so a lot of people will follow them if you know they say something is good or bad. But it, it's, again, very direct democracy for good and ill. And how does funding work for PHP? Uh, so funding is always like the tricky question. So for a long time, it used to be uh, so Zend, which used to be the, the original it's complicated. It's like they, they wrote the first proper engine with PHP 3, and it was like this, this company, and they would usually hire people to work on PHP. Uh, and then they got bought out a few times, and a lot of people there left. 
So then it was quite a big vacuum and it used to be that, okay, some people were allowed to work on it part-time by the employers, uh, either because it's like, well, we want it to be better for our use case. Nikita Popov specifically was hired by JetBrains uh, after university because he had contributed for a long time and basically needed a job after university. Uh, but then when he decided to leave, I think in 2021, if I'm correct, or 2022, I don't remember exactly. I think it was 21. Yeah, there was basically a big void in that, okay, there's only one specific person now that actually is paid to work on the language and, and do maintenance. And so that was a bit of a scary situation. So then a bunch of companies and people like got together and created the PHP Foundation. So it runs on Open Collective. So I think it's like a 501c, is that the correct yeah. like nonprofit uh, status in the US to basically get funding from companies and then the PHP Foundation like hires people either full-time or part-time. So we're currently 10. Three of us I know are full-time and then seven of us are part-time. Uh, most of us work actually on the language, but two of us work either on like CI, pipeline infrastructure stuff and uh, like just tooling around the, the PHP ecosystem. But that's roughly how the funding goes is that companies just donate money and then trust the foundation to allocate it properly. Now, two things to note there. Currently, about half of the work done on PHP comes from foundation developers. The other half is either volunteers or people who are working a little bit of time for their company. Also, the foundation doesn't have any official extra power. So an RFC proposed by a foundation developer doesn't get any inherent special treatment, good or ill. So, you know, there have been proposals from foundation developers that haven't passed. There have been a lot of others that just have passed, but it is technically an independent organization that doesn't have any official power. Okay. Uh, that democracy thing you were talking about to some extent also, huh? Okay. Exactly. Very cool. Looking forward, where does PHP seem to be going? As you said, you don't know until you have a vote, I guess, what actually happens, but where does it seem to be going? What might we expect to see from PHP in the near or further future? I think the biggest thing recently is the adoption of Franken PHP, which is a essentially PHP plugin for Caddy, so that instead of running PHP in a shared nothing environment through Apache or Nginx, you can now run it through Caddy and take advantage of a lot of Caddy's features like HTTP3 and stuff like that. It's a lot faster. It also then has a worker mode, which allows you to spin up a PHP application partway and then freeze that. And then every new request starts from there. So you can skip over most of your bootstrap. And that gets rid of most of the cost of the built-in serverless design of PHP. So that has been gaining a lot of popularity lately and was recently adopted by the PHP Foundation, so they can work on that directly. It's still not part of the PHP project itself, but I expect that to become a very big deal uh, in the near future. Uh, that just makes everything even faster. Other things we should look forward to, there's a steady march of new functionality to make the language more compact, more concise, more powerful, make the type system stronger, like Gina was talking about with partial generics. There's some active work right now in improving async in PHP. PHP does have asynchronous support right now through fibers. It's just a very low level and not widely used. So there's some other work happening right now around designing a more robust async system that will give you a much better set of APIs to work from that are more high level while still avoiding the colored function problem. So one thing that PHP has been very clear on, we want async, we do not want colored functions. So again, no promise of that happening, but that is something that is in active discussion and development right now. So I'd love to see that happen. And anything you'd like to add to that, Gina? I was trying to think of it, but uh, I think Larry covered most of like the whole direction where the language is going. Otherwise on the internal stuff is always trying to clean it up, make it faster, more robust, provide more engine APIs. I think that's it. I mean, like a lot of the time we work on stuff under the hood, like maintenance. And yeah, more people can always just propose more things and the process is very open. So none of us really know where it's going. So if you have an idea or if there's something you want, well, you can always just try and implement it yourself or submit a patch and, you know, a lot of us will review it. Other than what the big things that are currently being worked on, which Larry said, the future is wide open. I do want to add one thing there. We talked before about what would surprise people about modern PHP. Like a lot of languages that kind of sprang up in the 90s, early PHP was a very loosey-goosey language. And that you know, makes it easy to approach, but then lots of bugs hide in there. 
And a lot of the criticism of PHP was that it was so loosey-goosey and so on. Languages like JavaScript are still loosey-goosey. That's why things like TypeScript exist. PHP has really tightened a lot of those over the last 15, 20 years. So uh, I'd say three quarters or more of the, you know, this is just a weird side behavior that doesn't make any sense, but it is just how it happened to happen in 1996. Those have been fixed. And most of that work in recent years has been Gina. So, and it's... I, I, although I always find new cases because I just start like throwing stuff at the engine and it's like, oh, this comes out. Well, okay, I didn't know that. And then it's trying to convince people to agree that it's an edge case and we should warn or deprecate it, which yeah. most of the time people agree. Um, <laughs> most of the time. But yeah, sorry, again, most of the language wats uh, of PHP that used to be famous are now fixed. So if your memory of PHP is a loosey-goosey language with types that don't make any sense, that was 15 years ago. That's not PHP anymore. Okay, awesome. And thank you both for your time today and also for your work on PHP. Do either of you have any further closing remarks? Yeah, it's like if you do use PHP or if your company, well, more, okay, more if your company uses PHP because although, you know, individual sponsors are nice, that, that really shouldn't be the, the main focus. So if your company uses PHP, sponsoring the foundation is basically your insurance policy in that like there is somebody to maintain the language and if there's a security issue to address it or you know get more funding to do better security audits. I mean, there was one like uh, last year that was funded by the German government. Can hire more people or more developers and like spend more time on stuff because at the end of the day, uh, we're only like finite amount of people that can work on a finite amount of stuff. So if you're a company, you probably should or like try to raise it internally to get people to fund it because yeah, you don't get insurance for like your house burning down while it's on fire. I would add that applies to a lot of the tooling as well. PHP has an extremely robust tooling community, all of it open source, and all of those developers could use sponsorship for static analysis tools, for the debugging tools, code formatting tools, all of this ecosystem most of those developers could use funding to improve those too. So if you're using any of those tools with your PHP, sponsor those developers too. Awesome. And thank you both again. Yeah, thank you. This has yeah. been fun. Yeah, Thanks for having me. me.